Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Tommy Bass from Montana State University. Um, I would uh, like to kick off our first slide here uh, by also mentioning um, the director of this project and my colleague, Joe Heemstra at the University of Nebraska, uh, who's on the line today and might join us for a question and answer. <clears throat> We developed a program um, that was funded by USDA NEFA through their Beginning Farmer and Rancher uh, Grant Opportunity. Uh, we titled our program Building Environmental Leaders in Animal Agriculture. And the part I want to share with you today is about developing teaching modules that could complement uh, existing curricula uh, in agricultural education. So this project was a LPELC uh, collaboration led by the University of Nebraska, um, myself representing Montana State University, and then also one of my ag education colleagues, um, Dr. Shannon Arnold, um, over in another department was a, a major contributor. Um, but one of the most valued um, co-PIs here on this project was the Young Farmers Educational Association, which is uh, a not-for-profit group that works with a variety of ag education audiences um, from those in schools to young farmer, young adult young farmer education clubs around the country. And then finally, this project um, would not have even have been possible without our um, advisory committee uh, representing various groups engaged in ag education and extension, um, industry partners, et cetera. Um, and then finally, the example products that I'm going to describe here today. Um, though Jill and I did develop some ourselves, we had several mini grant partners um, that were able to help round out our suite of modules. So we had an overarching goal or philosophy with this project. And really, uh, you know, I think that it helped even sell the project during the competitive grant process. And that basically was that we did not want new and beginning producers to be hindered um, from entering agriculture or staying in agriculture because of fear or lack of knowledge of environmental issues. Um, the project, as I mentioned, addressed all sorts of beginning farmers and ranchers, but today's focus really is on what we, what we wanted to provide to young adults and those secondary and, and post-secondary students in agricultural teacher education, um, high school agricultural ed classes, as well as um, ag econ or animal science or environmental science um, at colleges and universities. The project as a whole had a broad set of products. Um, we did live trainings and presentations with the uh, Young Farmers Educational Association. Um, we met with them a couple different times uh, per year over the three-year project period, uh, providing um, live trainings uh, at their events. Uh, we did presentations and a workshop with other awardees from the NEFA grant program, from the beginning Farmer Rancher Development Program. Uh, and then what we're focusing on here today are our products that were web-based modules for use in high school, collegiate, or these young adult um, ag education uh, clubs and groups around the country. Um, and I guess finally I should mention also that there was a, a professional development component to these modules um, where uh, certain organizations could have their members self-study and receive uh, professional development CEUs. So oftentimes, uh, educators, whether we're in extension or, or teacher education, you know, we feel compelled that maybe we need to develop a curriculum. And our initial investigations really started to show that so many curricula already exist. Um, many teachers, particularly science teachers in the high school arena, are, are bound by teaching standards or instructors at high school or collegiate level have their own lesson plans already in existence. So what we wanted to do was not develop a new curriculum, but to develop modules that could drop into and complement what was already existing. Um, some of our initial, fa initial fact finding showed that ag teachers were less confident in teaching environmental topics. Um, as I mentioned, we wanted our materials to 
drop into um, ag science and science areas where um, it would just complement what they already needed to teach. And really the, the benefit we thought uh, as agricultural environmental educators is that we could provide current real-world scenarios related to environmental management of livestock and poultry. So our modules, um, which are available online, um, generally follow this format. There's a brief narrative. There's a PowerPoint companion that teachers or instructors are welcome to edit to their needs. There's a variety of uh, references supporting our claims and the information. And uh, being that it was an online format, you know, we sort of had the opportunity to take um, kind of a wiki approach where you could have some hyperlinked references right there in the content. Um, as far as teacher help tools, uh, we provided quiz questions, sample assignments, um, and of course answer keys and um, potential correct answers. Um, as far as activities, uh, we had debate ideas and discussion questions um, to really try and, and, and pursue that critical thinking level of knowledge about uh, the different modules, uh, issue-based modules. Larger project suggestions uh, were included. These would be the sorts of things that um, might be a science fair project or a semester-long project for a student or group of students. We attempted to include as much multimedia content as possible. There are a variety of video clips made specifically for this project or referenced from webcasts such as this or the LPELC's YouTube channel. And then finally, uh, to put it in a broader context for our students, we had example job and career lists um, so they could sort of see how the science uh, and environmental policy was related to ag production and then what that might mean um, as a job or a career. The available modules to date, um, these are just the, the simple titles and in the sake of time I can't go into a lot of details but um, as you see on the screen, Manure Management 101. Um, we also pulled from a past experience that Jill and I shared with uh, LPELC colleagues um, where we had a, an exercise-based module on developing an environmental policy statement uh, for a farm, ranch, or agribusiness. We covered basic water quality regulations, much of the Clean Water Act um, set of regulations that apply to animal agriculture, greenhouse gases, managing manure nutrients. Um, then we had two related multimedia modules from Colorado State University, one of our mini-grant subcontractors small-scale poultry production and um, small-scale sheep and goat production. Uh, once again with some economic focus but also tying it all back together with uh, environmental issues. And then finally we had a carcass management module um, largely focused on composting. So all of this information is the type of things that LPELC develops and catalogs and, and references throughout the uh, agricultural research and teaching arena. Um, but we really had to come up with a way to make this information relevant, um, particularly to agricultural education teachers who could use it. Um, and we chose to take the route of utilizing an existing reference system, um, the Ag Food and Natural Resource Career Cluster Content Standards. Now this is a set of standards or recommendations developed by the National Council for Agricultural Education. And these principles, these standards help guide the development of ag education curricula um, by many different groups. Um, you know, for example, um, John Deere is a major funder and they have an educational wing uh, that actually develops broad-based ag education curricula. Um, so, for example, that's just one set of um, curricular materials that, you know, sort of follow this guidance. The system, the career cluster content standards, are coded. Um, so it allowed us to cross-reference our modules to components of many ag ed curricula um, so where those modules could be dropped in. So just as an example, um, there's an overarching set of standards um, 
under a category called life knowledge and cluster skills. These are kind of holistic management issues that um, that that developers of AGAD curricula want the students to come away with. Um, additionally, um, these other four bullets are some of the other categories or pathways that we felt like um, ag environmental management information would really feed into. Now, to excuse me on this slide, it's there's way too many words and characters uh, to, to really comprehend, but I've tried to highlight here one example how the code system works and how those of us that are familiar with you know, uh, livestock and poultry environmental management would see how what we know and what we've produced for, say, extension purposes or outreach purposes could fit a more traditional education scenario. So I've highlighted some statements here, and if you just bear with me, I want to point some of these out. Um, this performance element coded under CS06 um, is to examine the importance of environmental management systems in organizations and their importance to performance and regulatory compliance. Now, as somebody who's worked with animal feeding operations for 15 years, I mean, this is essentially, you know, a component of my job description. Now, drilling down to the next level of what they call performance indicators, they recommend that students should be able to uh, as they're learning in various curricula, observe required regulations to maintain or improve environmental management systems, develop plans to maintain and improve environmental compliance and performance, and finally provide um, environmental operating guidelines. You know, so basically these are the goals that exist when a new curriculum is developed for agricultural education. And, you know, we just felt like the ongoing work of what many people uh, related to uh, this field and LPELC, you know, it's what we already do. And so we wanted to develop these modules that were student friendly, had interesting ideas, interesting activities, and then make them usable by students by using, or usable by teachers, excuse me, by using this cross-reference system. I will mention that below performance indicator, there is um, another level, a tertiary or sub-level to that, that actually starts to um, mention more specific activities or examples. And that's really where we just felt like we struck gold with being able to um, integrate um, this huge body of work in livestock and poultry environmental management into the needs, the teaching needs of agricultural educators. So in conclusion, we do have these modules mentioned. It's a robust set of materials that are ready for deployment. Um, we did go through a pilot testing scenario, and this is where um, State FFA Advisor for Montana, uh, as well as um, our ag education faculty across the street from my animal science building, were able to really help. Uh, and we had you know, positive feedback uh, on how these modules could fit into what they're already teaching. Um, it was not a new burdensome layer of something they had to teach, but something that helped make their job easier. So we were quite proud of that. Um, the teachers, the ag ed teachers, were very interested in these real world modules and scenarios. Um, at this point in time, uh, this project is officially over. Uh, but the materials are archived. Uh, we feel that an additional marketing and outreach needs to be done uh, to really get them uh, out there and in greater use and distribution. And certainly as um, new projects and collaborators and partners, you know, work with the LPELC, we'd like to see additional modules uh, that could be developed. Um, and I'll just sort of put this out there as a blanket uh, idea or request. You know, I think that um, with these already in existence, you know, the next grant opportunity uh, would be to really get a marketing plan together and a deployment plan, um, work closely between the scientists and developers of these modules, work closely between them and the ag ed teaching community, um, you know, to, to get these in circulation and, and get them in use. So with that, um, for a three-year large project, 
that's what I could distill down here to about 10 slides and 